you might miss your start date as a travel nurse if you can't get credentialed on time. And missing your start date can involve a lot of things. You have just left your staff nursing job. You have either driven your car, shipped your car, or flown across the country. You're paying out of pocket for your first couple of weeks of rent, all before you see your first paycheck, and you're duplicating your cost of living back home in order to get the tax-free stipend. When I first started travel nursing, I put down about $5,000 up front between paying for California rent, driving driving and shipping a car and paying for rent back home, all before I saw for my first paycheck, and this was coming from a staff nursing salary. So if you missed your start date because you're not credentialed on time, it can be a very expensive and very stressful transition into your travel nursing job. So how are you gonna avoid all of that? Today we're talking about how you're going to organize your Google Drive so that you have all of the documents you need to thrive as a travel nurse so that you're never gonna miss a start date. My name is Anna. I am an ICU travel nurse, part-time and full-time graduate student. I'm a first year student registered nurse anesthetist. I'm also a nurse educator and I teach and empower travel nurses and critical care nurses on competentcareacademy.com. We are diving right into it today and we are talking about what the credentialing timeline looks like, what you need to know about the timeline, and then how to set up your Google Drive, and then a couple of extra tips and tricks along the way. The timeline from submission to starting your travel nursing job is going to be a little bit different depending on what type of travel nursing contract you're working. If you're working a crisis assignment where they are not interviewing you and it's submission only and just the documents to submit and then you are an auto offer, then it could be as little as, you know, a 24, 48 hour turnaround back in the day with those crucial deployments for COVID and all of that, or the hurricane responses, those type of contracts, it can be a very fast turnaround from the time that you submit to the time that you're starting work. Typical travel nursing contracts that are not crisis responses, you are going to have a little bit of leeway, but it's still a really fast process. With a typical travel nursing agency, you are going to submit to the jobs with your recruiter, the facility is going to take a couple of days to look over your package, to do an interview, and then typically you'll hear back within like one to five business days from the time of submission. From the time of submission to the time of acceptance, you typically have 24 hours to think over the contract. And then while you are thinking over the contract, you are looking towards moving to starting this contract. And typically that timeline is about one to three to four weeks in advance. But you usually submit, you get a job offer, a day or two later, you have to sign within 24 hours, and then you have to be at the next location between a week and three to four weeks in advance. There's a couple things to know about agency hopping. So going from different travel nurse agency to different travel nurse agency, it's often the best way to get a little bit more money. However, it's also something that you're going to have to redo compliance with each new agency you onboard with. So you're going to have to show all of your immunizations, your documents, your references, and your drug screening are all going to have to go and be new and fresh for every single single new agency that you work with, which was why it's even more important to have a Google Drive <laughs> where you're going to keep all of your documents so that you're ready to go and that you're not held up trying to search through your phone and your old email for all of your old vaccination information. One quick little note for people who are travel nursing is that if you are agency hopping, then you are likely going to have to do a drug screen in between each new contract. And if you're working with the same agency, it is facility driven on whether they want a pre-employment drug screening before you're going to work there or sometimes if the hospitals aren't themselves requiring it, then you can do one drug screen a year. This is just going to depend. As travel nurses, it's important for you all to be aware of what's going on. I know that medical use for marijuana is legal in many places. It's legal recreationally in many places, but not for nurses. All of that to be aware of. If you're taking drug screenings every 13 weeks, you just need to be making sure that you're safe and making the right choices for you. Next, I'm going to show you how to actually go about setting up your Google Drive. Okay, so here I am in one of my <laughs> mini emails. I'm gonna show you how I have it set up in my personal email and we're gonna go from there. So everybody, if you have a Gmail account, you can see here, this is the drive. I'm gonna pretend that you don't know how to already navigate to there. So here is a Google Drive. And then from here, you're gonna click new and you're going to say new folder. You want everything to be organized in a folder so you can easily access all of the documents that you're going to be needing to use. So we're gonna name this folder travel nursing docs, travel nursing documents. And then we're gonna navigate into this folder. Okay, so this is where you're gonna import all of your vaccination documentation, all of your past medical history, all of your resumes, your cover letters, all of that good stuff. So from here, you're just going to go and you're going to do file uploads. 
I'm going to say that this nursing job market is, I'm going to say that's my vaccines. Okay. So as you're uploading things, it's also really important to name them properly. So if you right click on the thing that you just uploaded, you can rename it. And then I'm going to call this childhood, childhood vaccination series. So then this, when I open up on any computer or any phone, if I can log into my email, I'm gonna have access to all the information that I need. Something that I always do as well is I get a Google doc and I call the Google doc references. So then at different travel assignments that you go to, I enter their name, email, phone number. It can just be a charge nurse, it can be a travel nurse, it can be the manager. Oftentimes they want it to be a manager or another charge nurse. So then I will call this guy because it's important to rename everything. Travel nurse references. So then from here, this is where you're gonna upload your flu shot, your Tdap. Uh, you wanna upload a copy of your drug screen in case they lose it in transit and you wanna have copies of that from every place that you go to. You're gonna wanna upload your ACLS, your PALS, your BLS, and then also your nurses verification. And it's just really key to have everything that you need in the same place right here. So then any computer or any cell phone, as long as you can log into this account, you're gonna have all of the stuff that you're gonna need right here, and you're gonna be able to also just attach this document in an email, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So we're gonna go in, compose to nobody, to travel nurse recruiter. So when they ask you to insert all of your documentation, you can go down here to this little button, insert files using drive, and then you can just hit this folder Boom, right there. Everything that you need is all in one place. You don't have to go searching through your photos. You don't have to go searching through any of your old camera rolls or your old emails. Everything is nice and contained and compact right in this little folder. And that's all you need to know. A couple of credentialing tips and tricks to make the whole process go a lot faster. So if you're a nurse who works in the ER, critical care, labor and delivery, if you're required to have ACLS or PALS, do everything at the same time. You do not want to be a travel nurse and have your BLS expiring one year, your PALS expiring the next year, your ACLS expiring six months after that. It's incredibly inefficient. So even if you have to pay to do it all at the same time and one of them doesn't expire for another year, it's so worth it to go ahead and do your BLS, your PALS and your ACLS all on the same day. Trust me on this, it's something that is going to save you three up to two extra days out of your life with credentialing. You wanna just go ahead and knock all three out on the same day. We talked about this in the screen recording, but I think it's really helpful as a travel nurse to keep a running list of references so you never have to search back through your old emails or through your old notes apps to try to remember who was the manager at your contract that you worked at a year and a half ago. You worked there two and a half years ago, but they were the last time you worked in that specialty. Do yourself a favor and just make yourself a running Google Doc with a list of all of the references for who are charge nurses and then managers of the different units that you worked on. You don't have to get the manager to be your reference at every single place, but it is helpful for you to know what their contact information is in case you do need to contact them for some reason. Usually a charge nurse is enough as you are looking to go from contract to contract. And then you can also typically use your travel nurse recruiter, especially if you stick with one recruiter for a while as a reference. So do yourself a favor, save yourself a headache and go ahead and have that Google doc with the running list of references for each new place that you go to. And then then as you're nearing the end of every single contract, it's good to go ahead and just update your resume. I am going to have a link down below for how I format my resume as a travel nurse and it'll have like a template and guide for, and it's free. So click down below for the free resume template for travel nurses, because it's a little bit different from just a regular nursing resume because y'all are going to work at like 15 different facilities. So how do you format that? I'll have that link in the bio down below. And then as far as other organization tips go, I use Trello to organize all of my current addresses and to keep track of my location and tax homes and all of that stuff. I use Trello to organize that. Please comment if you'd like for me to go over how I organize Trello as a travel nurse. It's another free app that I use. As far as addresses go, it is really important to remember that as a travel nurse, you have to be paying to duplicate your expenses if you're going to take the tax-free stipend. And of course, this is not tax advice. This is just talking about the best way that you are going to make sure that you're doing everything correctly and that you are dotting all of your I's and crossing all of your T's. And then for choosing between travel nursing contracts, I 
have this YouTube video going over how to compare the hourly rates. And what you need to be looking at is you're comparing two different contracts that look like they're about the same, but they're actually pretty different in terms of take home pay. Check out that YouTube video. And then I wrote a book. It's called The First Time Travel Nurses Guide, and I'm going to have that linked down below as well. Please let me know what you would like for me to talk about next time. And thank you for your support. Bye.